Hi everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through how you can try and get those beyond the specification marks to get full marks in the AQA essay. So I do actually have a full video on my top tips for how to answer the essay in general. So if you haven't seen that yet then click up here and watch that first. What I'm going to be focusing on in this video is just this top box of the mark scheme. So how you can make sure you get into the top box and also how to get those 24 or 25 marks. So let's just have a look at that box in more detail. So to get full marks, you have to have achieved everything in this box, not just include beyond the spec information. So to get the full marks, you have to have a holistic answer. And what that means is for every paragraph you've written about, and that should be five or six, they do only mark your best four, but AQA recommend you write five or six. So you have some insurance paragraphs basically. And for each of those topics or paragraphs, you need to make sure you've made clear links to the title. And the theme of the question or the title always starts with the importance of and then it states the topic area. So for every topic area, you'll be describing and explaining that process or information. And then you have to say why that is important to and it might say organisms in biology processes in the rest of the question. You also have to make sure that everything you write about is detailed and fully A-level standard. So make sure you are using A-level key terms and it's well written and fully explained. So make sure you're not writing at GCSE level, which is actually quite easy to do without realizing. So for example, you learn about mitosis at GCSE and A-level. At GCSE, you learn that mitosis is for growth and repair, making identical cells. And if you said that was the importance, then that would be GCSE standard. For A-level standard, you need to link it to an A-level example. And one that I think is really good is clonal expansion in immunity because that's an example of mitosis that you don't know at GCSE and it's really important in terms of being able to make memory cells, plasma cells and therefore antibodies. You can't have any significant errors or anything that isn't relevant to the title. And if you've achieved all of that and only if, then you might get 24 or 25 marks if you have a whole chunk, so about a paragraph of beyond the specification information. So it can't just be the odd extra example of an enzyme or a disease that's beyond the spec. You do have to write quite a substantial amount to gain those marks. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on. So my top tips in general, just to try and get into that band, is always plan. So when you start paper three, go straight to the essay questions. Have a look at those titles and decide which one you're going to write. Don't do anything more than that because what you'll then find is if you go to the front and start answering all the questions, subconsciously you'll be thinking about the title and any ideas that pop into your head as you're answering the other questions, you can note down. Then think about the content. So when you do get on to planning the essay at the very end, so the final 45 minutes, you need to come up with four to six topics that would be relevant. Now, if you are running out of time and only manage to write two topics, you cannot get more than 10 marks on the essay. Next thing is to consider how you are structuring each of your five or six paragraphs. So you should be doing about half of what you write is AO1 and the other half is AO2. And the AO1 is where you're describing or explaining whatever concept or process or molecule that that paragraph is about. The AO2 is then when you apply your knowledge of why that is important. So for example, if you were saying, like we said in the previous example, um, if you were saying the importance of mitosis, you could link it to clonal expansion in the immune response. Now, if you're struggling to come up with your AO2, my tip would be thinking, what would happen if that molecule didn't exist or if that process didn't happen or if it went wrong? And that might give you a bit of an idea of how to come up with why it's so important. For example, if you had no RNA polymerase, 
if the RNA polymerase was non-functioning, then you wouldn't have any mRNA being created and protein synthesis wouldn't happen and you could explain that concept. The next thing to make sure to keep you in those top boxes is A-level key terms. So try and include as many key terms from A-level as possible. Check your essay for mistakes. Now, you might run out of time for this bit. If you have time, it's really important to check for mistakes to get you in that top box. And finally, save yourself time. You do not write an introduction or conclusion for this essay. They write this in the examiner's feedback every year that you don't need it and you waste your time doing it because it won't get marked. So do not write an introduction or a conclusion. So then when we come to planning the essay, this would be more what you do for revision when you have more time just to get used to structuring the essay. You could do something like this. So how does the topic link to the title? Write that here. Then list all of the key terms, key facts that are A-level standard that you want to include in AO1, the first half of the paragraph. Then the application of this knowledge section. Here is where you'd come up with your example of why it's important. And then if you can think of an example beyond the spec, you would write it here. Now you wouldn't necessarily do it in this much detail in the actual exam because of the time limitation. However, when you are practicing, this would be really useful as a way to lay out your plan for each of the five to six paragraphs to help you learn to structure. And it's really good revision of the skills and the content. So the final thing then, how to get that beyond the spec one or two marks. And it has to be, as I said, a whole paragraph. It can't just be a few extra names thrown in. So my top tips for what to learn to try and get to this is look at some of the old specification topics. So before the spec in 2015, have a look at the old spec because some things were taken off. And that means they'll be in old textbooks that you can learn at the correct level of detail. So cholera, emphysema, different coronary heart diseases are some good examples. Or you could find out about maybe one genetic disease or infectious disease, because that might link to a title. Or for gene technology and the importance of DNA, RNA, you could learn about CRISPR, which is a really recent or relatively recent gene um, genetic engineering method. So you could look at that. But the one that I'm going to focus on, which I think is your best option, is cholera. So I'm going to talk you through what used to be on the specification for cholera, and this is what to learn to write for a paragraph. And then I'll show you which essay titles this would be relevant for. So cholera is a disease caused by a bacterium called Vibrio cholerae, and it affects the small intestines and osmosis. Now, the way it does this is the bacteria releases a toxin which binds to the chloride protein channels on the cell surface membrane of epithelial cells in the small intestines, which we can see over here. When that toxin, toxin binds, it causes those protein channels to remain permanently open. And as a result, chloride ions move from within the epithelial cell into the lumen. So they'll be moving from within the cell into the lumen. And the effect that has is the water potential of the lumen is lowered. Therefore, water from the capillaries will move by osmosis into the epithelial cells and then move from the epithelial cells into the lumen. And that means you have lots and lots of water in the lumen. And therefore, someone with cholera ends up having diarrhea because you have lots of water within your feces. And also, that water has come from the blood and from the cells. So as a result, you'll have severe dehydration. So those would be the key things that you would need to know to write about cholera. Why it's important or how it links to the title depends on the title itself. So here are some examples of titles that you could write about cholera for. If you had any essay title that linked to bacteria or pro prokaryotic cells, because cholera is caused by a bacterium. If you had a title about proteins, the cholera toxin binds to those channel proteins and that causes them to remain open. So you could link this to an essay on proteins. 
If you had an essay on inorganic ions, then you could talk about cholera yet again because of that movement of the chloride ions from the epithelial cells into the lumen. It would also link to an essay on osmosis or if it was just about transport in general because the transport of that water by osmosis would count as transport. If you had an essay about movement, the movement of the water, again due by osmosis because of that loan of the water potential would make this essay paragraph relevant. Shapes, because the toxin is complementary in shape to the channel protein, that would be how you can link this to the idea of shapes. And lastly, if you had one about biological molecules, this is looking at the role of inorganic ions, so chloride ion, which is a biological molecule, or you could have it with the focus being water as well. So this is why I say if you want to try and get those 24, 25 marks and you know your essay writing is already ticking off all the other parts in that mark scheme, this would be what I would recommend you learn. Learn about cholera because there's so many different essay titles that you could link cholera to just by slightly changing the emphasis of how you write it. So that would be my top recommendation of how to get those full marks on the essay with the beyond the spec information. I hope you found it helpful today. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up.